lighting condition is a crucial factor in visual aesthetic. A good object in bad lighting can look awful. A mediocre object with the right lighting can become a beauty. For a watch, there are elements that contribute to the existence of a particular piece. The contrast in color, material, physical depth, and finishing accumulate into one unique watch. To fully appreciate the effect of lighting, the best way is to observe the piece with monotonic color scheme. When there is no color contrast, we are left with the rest of the design elements to identify the information from the background. The main piece today is the mid-size relic Yashmaster 168622, launched in Basel Expo 1999, which for now is the only one Rolex in my collection. There are multiple reasons for that, besides the obvious financial one. I decided to pick up a mid-size Yashmaster as my first Rolex a few years ago. But why not their best-selling models like Submariner, the Eterna or Dead Just? Considering my previous experience with many watches, I feel most comfortable with a watch with diameter between 33 to 38 mm. Knowing that helps me narrow down my first Rolex choices into a Datejust or an Explorer at 36mm or a mid-size Yashmaster at 35 or 37mm. An Explorer was a very tempting option considering many influential watch channels held it as the best for one watch collection. But for me, the most memorable Rolex designs are more about a watch with signature bezel, Submariner, Daytona, Datejust, and also Yashmaster. So the legendary Explorer is not my choice for the first Rorex. A Datejust, another classic and unmistakably Rolex. The standard 36mm is also a good size. But despite its comeback recently, as a great value for money vintage Rolex, a Datejust with fluted bezel still have a stigma of being an old man watch. So I decided to go with a Yashmaster, which is the only line with sporty bezel that are available in mid-size variants. When I narrow down to this, there are a handful mid-size Yashmaster available in the market, like the blue dial, rhodium dial, gold dial, rose gold with black bezel, and the platinum dial. I chose the all silver tone look of 168622 because of the monoblock visual character of it, with the belief that this minimalist approach would make the watch appear to be more modern and unify its wrist presence into a single statement. I guess I was right, but there was some unexpected turn the more I spent time with it, and it depends on totally external factor, lighting condition. This is a piece it can look gorgeous or bland, very much depend on what kind of light and which direction does it come from. It is basically a bland monotonic piece, but can turn into a gorgeous one when light comes from one side, creating shadow and accentuate bas relief quality of the dial. The color of material seems to be overall silver tone. But there's subtle differences with some close attention, 
we can see that platinum is a bit more yellowish than stainless steel. The signature shininess of Rolex is still notable after 20 years of use. To observe the impact of different lighting on the watch, let's look at some other monotonic pieces in my collection. This vintage Eden Amatic is very much a dead just with a twist at the bracelet. The fluted bezel of this piece is gorgeously playing with light, even though it is stainless steel, not precious metal. The side of the case is beveled and finished nicely, which accentuates the grace and thinness of the case. The lock end is hooded and tapered down to the bracelet which is in the 80s style that mostly seen with digital wash. The combination of this futuristic bracelet with a classic dead just case makes the whole thing look more like an evolution rather than an homage. Another good example of monotonic piece is this vintage Fortis Dr. Liner it is a rare piece with unique fixed bezel. The condition is a bit worn out, with spotted patina on the dial, but still retain the original character. Small details, like the finishing difference of our markers, the red accent on the dial and bezel, makes you discover more and more every time you wear the piece. The date and day window at 12 and 6 make the dial perfect symmetrical, which is a more popular arrangement nowadays. This piece used to be on a leather strap and fell out of favor, but it came back to my rotation since I matched it with a Jubilee bracelet. The profile of the case is notably slimmer than a modern watch which is the trend of his time. Having been wearing and observing these three pieces for a few years, there is another quality that makes a Rolex so special. That is how it wear on the wrist. The combination of all the curvature of the case and bracelet unifies its presence. It feels a bit like the watch is a metallic silver organism that grow on the wrist. The fact that almost all the surface of this piece is in silver tone evokes a monolithic feel, like a Greek statue carved out from a block of marble. The juxtaposition of material use, specifically stainless steel and platinum, add a deeper layer to its monotonic nature. The finishing of the wash and bracelet is tactilely rounded. You can feel this micro curvature when wearing it. Its silky smooth feeling makes it wear stunningly comfortable. The red accent of an always moving second hand and red text on the dial appropriately add visual interest to the otherwise monotone piece. A cherry on top, as they say. The first three years with my first Rolex has been a good one. From the process of making decision to experiencing it in real life. It is most obvious when you take only one watch on a trip that require you to do many different activities help you understand the versatility of the piece and how well it fit into your lifestyle. This Mr. Vintage Yash Master may not be a big purchase for many, but for me it is. So it was good to get to know many watches before I decided to go with my first Rolex. If not, I'm sure I'd make a different decision and it may not turn out to be a good one.